this is John Rupp's world and Andrew, our lighting guy's world. This is basically the front of the house section. This is where our sound guy, John Rupp, does his thing, works his magic. There he is. John Rupp. I want to introduce you. Well, you guys have probably met John Rupp. If you know our band, you you know John Rupp. He's been with us for years. But how do you how do you approach a venue like this? Well, the first thing you talk to the house guy, the guy who does the sound here all the time. He's in charge of the PA system. He hangs it. He tunes it. He helps all the touring guys come in. So you sit down with him. You kind of ask him. How does the room change with people in it where the, the, the dead spots or the, the spots where subs may hit too hard? Or is it, is it going to be harsh, empty, and then once people come in, it all cleans up? So that's your first step is always talking to them, picking their brain. I have a thing called Virtual Sound Check where oh, yes. I re record each show multi-track with Pro Tools HD right off the console every single day. And I can tell this console to, instead of receive from my stage rack, which is where all my uh, microphones and the i boxes go into out to the console i tell it to receive the same inputs from pro tools instead the gain structure remains the same everything's fantastic so i'll tune the room with the actual voice shows so i'll play the show from the night previous i'll walk around and bring stuff up or down or eq or compress or whatever you have to do to kind of find a happy medium all around the room and rooms like this especially it's round so it's not really acoustically awesome but it's like a magical room. So once you get thousands of bodies in here, it'll, it should tighten up and clean up and more clarity will come. A lot of the reflections will kind of disappear and get sucked up. So uh, yeah, that's pretty much how you approach it. How I approach it anyway. So, so basically that. he's a genius. <laughs> <laughs> I'd say 80% of that went over my head. <laughs> so right now Jason's about to check his drums. He's about to line check his drums. When he's done with that, I'm gonna take you to stage right, my world, and show you some of my guitars. One of the cool things we try and do is actually have the amps that are making noise either off stage or on stage facing backwards because that gives John, as a sound guy, more control to, to spread the guitar sounds more evenly throughout the venue through the PA than having our sound just come from the amp, which is a very focal point. And it also doesn't distract other guys on stage. Like if my guitar amp is really loud on stage, it might make Alejandro harder to hear himself singing. It may make it harder for Daniel to hear himself playing bass. So this is actually one of my favorite parts about being a guitar player is the pedal board. Uh, I'm obsessed with collecting these pedals and, um, and I just love the way that I'm able to control my sound by, by engaging them and stepping on them myself. I feel like I'm more a part of the performance when I can actually, there's that tactile feeling where I can actually touch it and it changes the sound. Um, everybody's different though. Alejandro uses a Kemper uh, amp and he actually has it dialed into the backing tracks into the laptop that Jason has uh, by his drum set so that Alejandro, all of Alejandro's electric guitar tones are pre-programmed and they change automatically throughout the course of the song which for him is great because as a lead singer he's already got so many things he's worrying about guitar, singing, the crowd that by not having to step on pedals it frees him up a lot but for me I don't have quite as many things going on, so I actually like to be able to play around with these guitar pedals. This is Tim's world. All the guitars are here. He does my changes and he does Alejandro's changes. Um, so he's got a lot of guitars on his plate. And in between every song, he's constantly tuning because we play in a lot of different tunings. So he's making sure all the guitars are in the right tunings and that the right guitars go out to the right person. What are you working on here? Just this, this is um, Yandy's Alejandro's guitar. Mm -hmm. It's a beautiful guitar. Um, yeah, just uh, new string, the new one, new string. Yeah, that's an awesome part also about having a tech is he constantly makes sure they're restrung, got new fresh strings. He always checks the intonation, makes sure all the tuning is, is good to go. Basically here we have my Gretsch White Falcon. And this one's down a half step? Yes, there. half step. Cool. Half step. This one's standard. This is a Gibson Les Paul. Um, 
And then this is the Ernie Ball Axis Super Sport, and I have a tobacco one and a white one. So there's four guitars that I have on tour, and then Alejandro's got all of his. John, is there any way to get the guitar on in the house? Thanks, man. So this is just like clean tone. This is basically just how the amps sound naturally. This is like with no pedals. Um, it's a very like warm, full, clean tone sound. But basically then when I want to start adding the overdrives, that's one. This is another one. And then you have all your delays. It's like right now there's no delay. When I kill a note, it doesn't ring out, but. It's a short little delay. This is a longer delay. You can hear that kind of trail off a lot more. Sometimes I'll get like a really wet reverb, put on a couple different delays. You can even have that pog that I was talking about that makes it sound like an organ, a bit of overdrive, and then you can just kind of you know, compression pedals on. So this is a lot of pedals engaged. So for this song, I like to dirty it up a bit. So right when I come in, I have my heaviest overdrive pedal on the OCD. So when I come in, And then when I'm doing like a palm muted version, I'll do this overdrive pedal, the Voyager. So that's just one of the songs. That's uh, one of the heavier, more rock songs that we play. Um, but then, you know, even for songs like Find Me, maybe just do a little bit of overdrive, um, tap out the delay so it's in three, four times. So I'll go one, two, three, one, two, three. Um, might even add this one, one, two, three, one, two, three. So depending on the song. <laughs> like in the bridge I can even kind of change the reverb up a little bit make it really kind of wet so it's So that's um, just an example of how I can go from our second go from really, really heavy, like the Everlong song, to then that 
riff and find me that's very little overdrive, much more about the reverb and the delay. So our set kind of goes up and down like that. We usually in the middle of the set will have an acoustic portion of the set where we strip everything down. So I've got to kind of have like a versatile sound where I can go from heavy rock to some songs to then very, I guess, more pretty or melodic in certain other songs. But that's it. Um, I hope you guys enjoyed seeing the pedals. I hope you enjoyed seeing the guitars. I'm glad you had some time to talk with John because he's got so much knowledge to share about sound and audio. Um, glad you got to meet Tim, Tim Pack, amazing guitar tech. Um, it's about 3.30, so I'm gonna maybe go for a quick jog, um, try and just get the blood flowing, get a little bit of exercise, and then the show's, before you know it, it's gonna be around the corner. Your heart has to be far below